channel. Today I'm just doing something a little bit different, I'm not on the beach or anything like that. Just come to a totally new venue for me. Um, never been here before. I hear a lot about it. Um, it's Billing Billingford Lakes uh, near Derham in Norfolk. Uh, there's 11 lakes. I've just gone for the Pleasure uh, Pleasure Lake, which is I think it's called Basil Todd. There's 11 lakes on the complex. Absolutely fantastic venue. Uh, I'll just give you a quick tour of the place. Well, this is a lake I'm fishing, and then I'll go through what, what I'm doing for today. Uh, this is Basil Todd. Uh, you see the lake goes all the way around. A few people turning up. I was here just before seven. The gates open at seven o'clock. Ten, twelve pound for the day. So, I mean. So what I've decided to do, I don't know anything about the place. I've never fished here before. And it is very deep, I found out it's very deep. So I've got two edge rigs, both um I'll show you. I've got two edge rigs, which one near the lilies, that's at seven metres, but it's still very, very deep. Dibber style float, and that's just down. It's a six, six pound main line, four pound full length. Uh, down here, so it's a 14 animal hook. That's just a bulk rig on that one, and that'll be down just by the lilies there, and then just by those overhanging trees. So it's very deep and also it's very clear so I'm not sure how the edge rig's going to go. I've also set up another rig at 7 metres. I found out that the lake, the closer it gets to this right hand side bay, the shallower it gets and it seems to be quite hard and where that hand goes opposite me, it just drops off really steep so I'm fishing just up on the start of the incline of the of the, uh, of the lake bed where it comes up. So it's seven metres and uh, on that rig I've set up a bit of everything today because I don't know anything about the place. This is top four on this one, and I've just got a this is six to eight uh, hollow elastic. Got one point five gram rig because it is top four deep. It is top four deep. I haven't got a spare top four, so I'll just keep it on here on the on the winder and put a band around it. That's 0.14 mil main line and 0.10 hook length, and it's only a small size 18 B520 on here. I'm just going to fish with everything on there. I'll just put some ground bait and dead maggots over there. I've also got a six meter line in front of me, which I'm going to hopefully for later on if the carp do push in. Edge rig for carp, um, but I'm, I'm also pinging out pellets at the minute. Six and eight little pellets out towards the tree in the middle of the lake. I've got a method feeder set up on there, which I'm going to start off on. I'm just doing a mixture of uh, green fish meal and micros in there, and. Uh, just about to put on a few dead reds but yeah we'll see what today brings and uh, apparently it's very good there's all sorts in here carp up to 20 pound there's bream skimmers tench roach rub um, let me just ping some more pellets out and I'll, I'll just talk you through my method method rigs and that while the, while the wind's not blowing Find some eight mils literally over my method line. I'm 
I've got a 25 gram method feeder on. This is baiting up now. I've got uh, four dead red maggots on this one. I'll probably, I might go to pellet. Um, it's a case of uh, just seeing what they want and how they place fishes. I mean, there's no information. I've not heard anything. So, um, what's the best baits? What's the best methods? Um, all I know is it's a mixed fishery. Someone said it's fishing really well. Just fishing up to a clip. very deep out there, but where I'm fishing there it starts to come up on a hard bank. But that's a 25 gram method feeder, it's still counting to 10 before it settles, so it's still really deep. And it's just settling now. I'm just putting the rod where the eye is and on here. So if there's any violent takes, it's not going to get wrenched in. I've also got a, that's on a 10 foot midi battle zone feeder rod. I've got 9 pound Shimano Technium mainline, 25 gram method feeder, quick change. The same hook length, um, the 14 B960 on there. I can put a band on later on. I've also got a MIDI battle zone 10 foot pellet feeder rod. I think it's 7.5 pound Shimano Technium line on there. That's down to that is down to a 6 gram pellet waggler. Just free running. Uh, there's a rubber stopper there and two number 10 stops. I can just adjust that to the depth that I want. That's on a band, I've just got a six mil pellet on there at the minute, I haven't cast that out yet. Uh, I've got a Shakespeare XT 3500 front drag reel on that one. I've got 4000 on the method line. And I've also got a bomb rod set up just to go over, uh, try the bomb and pellet later on. If if they're turning on to the pellet, I've got the shake them Mac 1 XT 10 foot uh, feeder rod, method feeder rod, uh, Shimano, an old Shimano 3500 or 310, sorry, Aero GT, bite and drag. There's eight pound Fox Rage line on there. That's going to be just down to a bomb. A small cube bomb, which I haven't put on yet. Probably just one of the 15, 20 grams. A small cube bomb. 12 inch hook length. That's uh, 0 0.16, it's about six and a half pound. A size 18 B960 to a band on there, and uh, again, I'm not, not cast that one out yet, but just cast this one in and we'll see what happens. And I'll get back to you in a bit. It is now, I've just literally uh, started fishing, uh, it's about half past eight, so it's, uh, I've got down here, had a good look around, had a walk around, looked at the venue, and uh. We'll see what happens. I'll get back to you in a bit. We've got a fish on, guys. Not that big. It's uh, been quite slow at the minute. But I've just changed to four or five red maggots. And I changed over to a pellet feeder rather than a method feeder. It's gone. It's gone, man. Try a little carp. Oh, it's not fun, huh? Spring.
tried pellet, I've tried wafters, wafters. Not to touch at the minute, but most people are, I can see are. I'll just switch you around. There's a few more. So. Yeah, this is a kind of feeder, very short, like two and a half, three inch length. Four or five dead red maggots. Fish on? First fish, but. Uh, I've just. Uh, Keep putting the bait in at seven meters, and I've just started feeding the left edge line. It's just uh, to the left of that tree, it's about seven meters out, but a couple of foot from the lilies where it drops off. Just that one with pellets, pellets only, and uh, corn. I haven't fed this one yet. I'll just keep feeding this one. And, uh, moments went to feed pellets and that over my pellet line but, uh, just to keep it accurate while I'm not while I'm not uh, fishing on the line and I've got the pole to aim at I'm just a small amount of bait and maybe sort of like 10 minutes just putting a little bit in just keeping the peg topped up I've not actually even fished on this Seven metre line at the minute. But there's a stiff, stiff wind blowing. As I say, without having a, a pole, end of a pole tip to aim at, I, I don't want to risk spraying my bait left, right, and centre. Uh, every ten minutes, putting a little bit of bait in, popping it up. I do the same with the uh, left hand one in a bit. That's had a bit more pellet and corn in that one. I'll just go for a bit of a max approach in a minute. I'm just trying to fish through anything. I can probably see that everybody else is just fishing PVA bags and boilies and waiting for the tip to fly around or the buzzers to go off. But there's everything in here, bream, tench, roach, rug, crusions, carp, say carp's 20 pounds, so I'm not gonna go and run all out with a carp attack. I've got, I've got uh, 30 different baits. I've got six mil all sorts washers I've got some washed out ones eight mil got some ring of chocolate orange ten mil which I'll probably give a go in a bit I've got a tub of the uh, mini match boilies which these are really good the van der nine ones the squid squid and krill Stink. Uh, it smells actually quite nice actually. I could eat one of them, but I find the white and the yellow ones are brilliant. Just a little bait spike for a bite. And I've got some of these uh, 
8 to 10 mil strawberries and cream, which did me really well last time I was out using them. The little dumbbell ones. Little strawberries and cream. But I'm just switching it up in a minute. I've just got to say, I've got a bit. Took the method feeder off. Just gone on for a pellet feeder because it's so deep. I just feel it's getting the bait to the bottom a bit better with all the bait being inside the actual pellet feeder. Not. And I'm just fish, fishing this one with maggot 50 50 uh, round bait. Watching the micros and dead maggots. But then I'll swap it over. I thought I'd put a I thought I'd put a pellet on or any of the washers or something, I'll quickly switch it over to the pellet feeder, put a band on, or a spike or whatever I'll put on, and switch it over. It's all quick, quick change, quick interchangeable system. What's just the time now? It is 10 o'clock. I thought we'd have had a few more fish, or a few more bites, but uh, not knowing the venue, I'm just sort of feeding my way in. I'm not going to go gum ho with the bait or anything. Well, I've just switched over. It's been very quiet. I can't even see any carp moving. Or... They're too, too bream on the feeder line. I think I'm going to have to come closer in, just, to me, now, middle of May, it's getting quite warm, it just seems a bit too deep out there, to, to, to where the fish want to be, so, there we go then, straight back in, <laughs> oh, there he goes, yeah, it just seems a bit too deep out there, I don't think the fish are probably going to come closer in, so I just refed all my lines, I just thought I'd, uh, Try this and try to catch anything, sort of anything that swims. I've gone on the pole, just put a couple of maggots on, see what's in the peg. I've got a lighter shellastic on it. I might have to step the hook up, it's only a, it's a tiny size 18. B512, which is the red one, like a B520, a little bit fine and white, so I do start and catch a few little stockies or tench or stronger B520 on or stronger hook but what I was thinking as well I'm just going to get a little pole pot put it on the end of my pole I'm going to start uh, uh, yes. probably what the deal is actually uh, it's just a floats just buried again there and it's never roach and it's buried again and it's never roach so this elastic's too heavy, um, barely lifting it really. I know this elastic's too heavy, so I'll probably, I'll probably take a risk and put like a number five elastic on straight there. Or I might just try and bear with and just not even strike, just lift, in, lift into these because uh, in case I do counter. A better fish, but yeah, I'm gonna put a it's another little roach scale perfect. There's a fishy chuck down there at the minute. I'm gonna still carry on feeding pellets and give it another hour or two if I can see some signs of movement out there. It's getting quite warm now, the sun's coming up. There should be some carp starting to move shortly. You know. but I've only seen two fish come out this morning, so whether it's just a slow start or but maybe uh, you just don't know, it's just a save. 
totally new venue, never fished it, so you're just feeling your way in. I could just go out for an all-out carp attack with boilies and pellets, and PVA bags. But the aim of the video is just to try and catch anything and see what's in here. I, mean, I heard there's quite a lot of breeding, so maybe just you. Maybe a conventional uh, feeder, just a normal ground bait feeder and a longer hook length of the bream might work. So, we're catching a fishing shot now. I'm going to go and put a pole pot on and then we'll keep firing some pellets in. And we'll get back to you in a little bit. Few maggots in there, a little bit of ground bait and micros. I'm just gonna feed little and often. Try and build the peg up a bit. I've just uh, refed some pellets down there. Pellets to the left of me. line right in the line with the corner of the pallet just tipping it over giving it a little tap just lifting it it's got an olivet on letting it straighten out just holding it just dropping it into position lifting it off spinning it around There's a bite there. The wind seems to be getting a bit stronger and stronger as the days are progressing. The north west wind. I don't know if you can see this, look. Where are, this peg is. It's, a, it's quite a hard gravelly bottom here and as it goes to the left where it gets deeper and deeper it gets into a lot softer silty bottom so I'm just fishing on the edge of the suddenly picked up. I think I'll probably start feeding this right now margin near this uh, tree here. And what I'll probably do with that one is um, probably just corn, I think. Corn from micros and corn, uh, corn mills. Just down there. See if you can snare a potential carp or something. I 
I've got a BP elastic on there. I've got a 12 to 16 hollow. The white one. And that car was 22 pounds. We're out on that. But it's a nice day. And it's just nice to get out and I might have a look along the Wensum there, they've got a nice stretch of the Wensum and I was looking at it this morning when I was waiting. Plenty of kingfishes and wildlife and everything and they've got some big yurts as you come in and do wildlife walks. It's obviously a beautiful part of the countryside. dragging single crayfish it should be in here they're not even native so it's, it's a good opportunity to change my hook length um, just slightly stepped it up to 0.10 um, it's just using the gamma catsu g line it's fantastic stuff I swear by it I've used it for years and years now it's expensive but i have it in every uh, diameter i mean it's so thin it's pretty stretched obviously uh 0.10 mil three and a half pound and uh, I've just put on a uh, size 18, you'll probably not be able to see it, but size 18 cameras and B911 F1, so it's slightly uh, the finer version than the B911. But just in case, we uh, still a nice, light, fine hook, but it's still very strong, as the name suggests. You know, designed for anything F1, small carp. Tench, you know. Okay, let's just uh, fill the pot. Oh, not fill it. A little bit more length of line on between pole and pole uh, between the pole and float. It's quite short in the minute, but I'm only fishing seven meters, so it shouldn't be too bad. I should be able to hold it here. I've seen the guy over there have one fish very early on. Fish on straight away, so it's a little bit better. And seen the guy over there, or the young lady, she had a fish. But I've not seen anything come out from them for an hour, so. Roach. Where is that we 
worms and the big fish arrive. And you get the big roach and the bream and the skimmers and hopefully then the carp following later on. I'm just going to keep building the peg up now. Probably feeding a little bit more often. Put a bit more bait in. Now I've got the pot on, I'm probably feeding. Well, I'll assess it, but feed it after every cast. Right, it's a nice roach. I was quite deeply hooked that one, which is all in. I need to put another shot a bit closer to the hook, I think. Another couple of maggots. That hook's nice and sharp. Maggots are going in nice and clean. I might pull that float down a touch because put a slightly longer hook length on so I can pull that float down and give me a little bit more line between pole float and tip. Probably just bring that olivet down a touch now as well. Another ten, number ten stop. Oh, I missed that one. I'm buried, absolutely buried. find seven meters is one of those funny distances it's just a little bit too long to throw it accurately especially with the wind like this so you've got to put a pole on Lift it and drop it, lift it and drop it. Using maggots, so. Using movement to entice the fish. but it's not mad, it's not, it's not, it's not crazy. Right, I'm just going to move this float down. As I say, the hook length is a fair bit longer. I wanted a little bit more line on the bottom. I was only just touching the bottom before. And, uh... I'm 
Oh, I know bait, so that might help. We had some bait on. Well, I've just shallowed up about three or four inches. Let's put another shot on the uh, Get back out where we are. Just got to be a bit careful when it's such a short hook length. Uh, it did a wrap round the pole pot, so, so I've just lengthened it a bit. Oh, fish straight on that. Yeah. Oh, come off. Mm. No, it's come off. I can't see. Where's my bait? Have we got bait on now? Or is it nabbing bait? No, yeah, still got maggots on. Still got maggot on. Just give myself a bit of extra line. But so far, touch wood. I was just thinking today. I spent the last two and a half months sea fishing, beach fishing, me casting up to you know eight ounces and big heavy rods and reels and line and all the rest of it. That uh, normally I end up the first session back into a course fish and have a, a nightmare of snapping everything and you snapping your lines and pulling too tight and breaking things because <laughs> it's, you're not used to the finesse of it. And uh, but uh, touch wood so far. I've not had any problems. It's a bit of a, bit of a step down when you're used to a 20, 30, 40 pound hook length and 102 hooks to stepping down to 0.8 and it's a tiny size 18 hook. It takes a little while to get your head around it. If this wind would settle a bit, I'd start chucking by hand. Let me try that. That's it. I think it'll just create a bit more attraction when you're throwing rather than potting it. And potting's good for accuracy. Good for accuracy and keeping it and getting the bait in one sort of clump and down quickly. But if you want to attract fish into the swim, you can't can't be catapulting or throwing it because that noise on the surface and it fluttering through the water attracts the fish in. And then later on, once the fish are in and you want to get them down into one point, pole pot it. So just doing you start doing a bit of bit of both. But I think I'll, I'll uh, give this another bite and then I'll, go and, I'll have to go and re-feed uh, my other lines. And it's definitely getting out warm now so I need to be picking up that catapult more. I'll do that while I'm uh, fishing this still. I'm just going to rest it on my knee. Get them pellets out there. I think I need to start being a little bit more active now. I'm used to the beach fishing style where you just sit back and wait for a bite, but I'm not doing that course fishing. You've got to be a bit more active. Maggots were sucked. Well, we catch plenty of roach on my seven meter line, but only small bits. There's quite a lot of crayfish down there as well. I've gone back out on the pellet, but nothing, no, no touches, nothing. So I've just switched back to what I was originally doing. Take the pellet, pellet feeder off, sorry, and uh, put back on the better feeder. Just gone back to uh, 
uh, ground bait and micro pellets and dead maggot. Excuse me. They just put four dead, uh, dead red maggots on the hook and the tips gone flying around. They just pulled out of a nice bream. Don't know how, but one of the dead maggots it folded back over the point. Which is strange for a dead maggot, but it has. Maybe where they loaded it. But yeah, I'm going to stick, up, stick at this then because seems to be getting the most results at the minute. I've just uh, put a big pot full, dump pot of dead maggots and a few bits of corn to the tree to my right and keep me feeding this every sort of like 15 minutes with pellets and corn. But with the water being so clear, it's gene clear actually, I don't think they're going to come down the edges unless it's dark, you know, a bit later on in the day, dusk time. But I veg my bets and just put a big, great big pot full of dead maggots down there. I'll keep watching if there's any signs of mud coming up or tails or swirls or whatever. I'll go down there. But uh, keep, keep hitting the pellets. I keep trying the pellet waggler. I've got it set for about five foot six foot because it's really deep out there I don't want to go too shallow I've not seen anything jump I've not seen anything top but I'll just keep feeding three four pellets not too regularly because I'm not getting too many bites but what I have done is I will try later the line up keep her I mean everyone here is carp fishing out and out of carp fishing um, so maybe the carp and that are tuned into boilies and stuff so what I'm doing is rather than a bomb and I've got my bomb on it's got a little 25 30 gram I just put a 15 mil mainline bait cell boily on there. And I'm going to just give that a go in a little bit, see if I can get anything on that. Because I think, as I say, I think they are used to uh, all pellet, uh, all boilies and that in this lake by the looks of it. Is at a few venues in a, where it used to be a mixture of natural baits, maggots, and that. Obviously, it work well in the winter, but come summer, oilies will outscore anything. Because yeah. that's what they get tuned into high protein baits. That's what they see all the time. And big pellets, halibut pellets, boilies, and that, that's what they get accustomed to, especially now that it's getting warmer now, this time of year. So, but I'll just carry on doing what I'm doing. Hopefully for a few more bream, you never know, a carp might even come along in the mix. So. As I say, I'm just doing a, almost a match style method today. Quick sign off guys, I've all packed up and nearly home. It went really, really slow. Um, I had a walk around the lake, had a walk around the complex, had a chat with a few people. Um, it was really, really slow. Hard, no one was catching. I, I saw two fish being caught after about 12 o'clock. I uh, don't know whether it's a sudden change in weather, it's hot. Um, the water was impeccably clear, it was gin clear, you could see six foot down, I was chucking bits of sweet corn in and I'm watching it go all the way to the bottom. It's absolutely zero 
colour in the water whatsoever. I don't know if it's always like that or what, but um, actually, I had more crayfish in the end than uh, than fish. Uh, I had about six crayfish. I think they've got a bit of a crayfish problem, uh, which needs to adjust. And to my right on, on the platform, there was two big uh, crayfish lobster creels, which were absolutely full, jammed full uh, of crayfish. I had, a, I had a good look around the complex. I didn't see all of it by far. It's massive. Um, I drove further around to the main lake, the Great Lake, and a couple of other ones. That was just literally a sea of bivvies and carp rods everywhere. Uh, every every peg with bivvies up, uh, rods out, which is not really my cup of tea. If, I mean, I, don't, I like carp fishing. But that was that was tent city, uh, and that's not my that's not my idea of, of fishing. I'd rather go to somewhere a bit further out of the way, like um, Swanton Morley or the one out near Attleborough, Swangy Lakes. Um, nice and quiet. You do get people there at the weekend, but it's not absolute bivy. The whole bivy brigade and. You know, bait boats out and all the rest of it. Anyway, but if that's your thing, that's your thing. But um, that's not my thing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was, it was an absolutely fantastic venue, absolutely beautiful looking venue. Uh, but they're doing obviously, which is great to see. So much work and development in the cafe and sites and toilet, and it's clean. Unfortunately, it didn't fish very well. Uh, and I tried. No, I, I tried, I had a pole set up, I had an all-rounder rig set up at about 12 foot deep on the bottom at 7 metres. I changed to a lighter hook length, smaller hook, a um, few roach. I was even going, you know, just feeding maggots and ground bait and just catching small roach and wasn't wasn't prolific. Even that sort of like dried up. Um, I had a little whip with a five... Uh, five solid elastic and just tiny little roach like that uh, so I went on the method feeder changed hook length went down to 0.10 smaller hook uh, dead maggots a couple of skim of bream but yeah, very 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 disappointed uh, I might give it another go I didn't even see any carp cruising all day long. Never saw any carp popping. So I don't know whether, you know, when I went down the Great Lake and a couple of the other lakes, it was solid. There were so many cars, so many people. I guess it's very, very heavy pressure water. It's very heavy pressure, heavy, heavy fed. Uh, Voiding will probably be the main way, as I said earlier. Um, they start going in in that volume it's, it's hard to compete with boiling and all the rest of the tactics but yeah that was a nice day out uh, that's actually stinking hot now it's half past three so uh, it's not a great deal to report really so I'll take care and I'll see you again in another video <laughs>